Uh, come on. Good evening. Yeah, I was, I was wondering whether there was something in that corner. Uh, wondering why the center had been put there. You're all welcome for Inspire 2014. Are you happy to be here? It's been 10 years. You know, sometimes you don't realize how fast time is turning until you reach a certain age. Um, and today we are here to begin the 10 years celebration of Inspire 2014. Um, my job is simple. Just to give you a snapshot of where we're coming from, and to give you some insight of where we're going, and uh, then to invite the speaker. Of recent, I've been learning how to, to be formal, so I'll, I'll just start it properly. Our guest of honor, who is, who was, and who is to come, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, the king of kings, the lord of lords, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the Alpha and Omega. Ladies and gentlemen, let us stand up and put our hands together. Let us make a joyful noise as we acknowledge Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Give him a shout and say, glory, glory, glory. We worship you, Jesus. We give you all the honor, all the glory, all the power belongs to you. Amen. Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, is our guest of honor. In case you are coming, you probably wonder why we don't have a table here. Because the guest of honor is Jesus Christ himself. And he's here with us. This whole 10 years and this whole Inspire Conference is all about Jesus. The generation of effective Christian leaders are men and women that will propagate the kingdom principles wherever God has positioned us. And that is what the Inspire vision is all about. Just take your seats and I'll just carry on. Our guest, of, our guest speaker, Dr. Steve Sofiri Ogan, the co-speakers, um, I think none of them is here, Pastor Leban Jumba, this, um, and Dr. Bishop John Brown Masinde, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. It's with much delight that I welcome you all to the 10th season of the Inspire Conference. It's once again a pleasure for us to have Dr. Ogan and the other speakers leave their busy schedules to come and speak to us during this year's conference. Inspire 2014. Just for those who are here with us for the first time, the Inspire Conference is a conference that's organized by a coalition of dynamic and enlightened. professionals and it continues to bring change in the lives of the professionals for the global marketplace. This coalition of young workers are fellowships from five churches in Kampala, Watoto Church, All Saints Cathedral Nakasero, the Church of the Resurrection Bogolobi Church of Uganda, Makere Full Gospel Church and Deliverance Church Makere Hill, who believe that if one can chase a thousand, then two can chase ten thousand. We believe in synergy. One plus one is greater than two. And the reason why we are a synergy is because we believe that when you go to the marketplace, you don't only find people from your church or from your denomination. When, you, when I go to Standard Chartered Bank, I am probably one of the only ones from my church. And in order for us as Christians to be effective, Jesus prayed that let them be one as I and the Father are one. And the biggest challenge for the church today is unity. And so God has enabled us for the past 10 years to be five churches from different denominations standing together for 10 years. And it's possible. The fact that we have done it for 10 years, that means it can be done. This symposium was started with an aim to equip workers and professionals and business people through motivating and inspiring them to unleash their unique potential. And our fellowships bring together professionals from across the whole economic spectrum. Inspire is proudly associated with highly sought-after executives and entrepreneurs in Africa, and it has attracted a number of internationally known Christian motivational speakers, authors, and business leaders. Our mission and activities are geared towards raising an, a generation 
We say a generation. We want a lot of people, a whole bunch of people that are different. Um, yes, we're raising a generation of effective Christian leaders. It is our conviction that your participation in this conference shall avail you with priceless resource to advance in what is purposeful, purposeful in life at the marketplace. It will also present you with a lifetime opportunity to network with professions. People who will be attending this conference will come from different walks of life, from different professions. So you have an opportunity to interact with them. Over the past five years, God has been leading us in a very peculiar direction. Right from, I mean, from 2005 when we began, we've systematically been progressing. The visions may have different titles, but we can clearly see we are moving in the same direction. We believe that God is emphasizing a specific direction for this year during our 10th year Inspire season. It is not surprising that our 10th year conference is happening in a year when there's a lot of uncertainty hovering all over the air following the enactment of the anti-gay bill leading to the increased condensation from international community that is likely to result in the, in the reduction of, of, of aid. There is no better time than now for the revealing of the sons of God, people that know their God, that are enlightened, that will be strong and begin to do great exploits, to illuminate. It is time for the revealing of a new breed of men and women who know their God and shall begin to provide solutions to the old problems. Friends, we believe that all this is happening so that we can get unleashed. If you look at the Bible, the Josephs, the Daniels, the Nehemiahs, they showed up during times of world crises. And we believe it's not surprising that from nowhere Uganda has become such a major news item. I live and work in Kenya, but everything that we're hearing, when you turn on Facebook, any mention of Uganda has everything to do with the anti-gay bill. And I'm wondering how come we've had worse problems than, and we've not made such news. But because of now, for some reason, there's a lot of, of oppression on us. Our, our possession, our takeover, the mountains, the systems of this world shall, come, shall not come by simply Christians applying business school or leadership school, or organizational learning school knowledge, or marketplace experience, corporate knowledge, skills, or experience. It is not a question of Christians applying worldly wisdom to solve problems in the world. Nor is it entirely the successful Christians in government or corporate world migrating best practice to the church. The world and the secular people have had all that knowledge and skills and experience much longer that, than we probably will ever have. It has, and they have not been able to solve the world's problems permanently. The reason for that is because they are mysteries. The Bible says they are mysteries of God that he has kept secret, that he has hidden from ages and through generations, but now is revealing this to his sins, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. The Bible says that, that the creation is groaning for the manifestation, for the revealing of the sons of God. As the sons of God get enlightened and they take heed, the Bible says, take heed to what they hear, and with ears that, ear, that hear and eyes that see, their hearts may gain understanding. These mysteries, and they will begin to illuminate. They will begin to provide solutions to today's problems. The Bible says that before the seventh trumpet in Revelation sounds, all the mysteries, the things about of God that have been hidden, shall have been revealed. Paul, in Paul's letters, it keeps referring to the mysteries of the church. This is a mystery of husband and wife. It's a mystery of the relationship between church and and Christ. There are mysteries that have been hidden. In the Bible, when, when Jesus was talking about the parable of the sower, he tells them that if you have ears, let those who have ears hear what the, what the Spirit says. And he says that in that, chapter, that scripture of the parable of the sower, Jesus tells the disciples, after he has narrated the different types of soils and the reaction to them, the disciples told him, what did you mean by this parable? And he told them, if you don't understand this parable, how will you understand all other things? And he goes ahead to explain what that parable means. And he says that the mysteries of God belong to you and, your, and the disciples. 
but to others they will hear and not understand. They will see and they will not be able to perceive. Then in verse 20 it says that everything that has been hidden shall be brought to light. The things that have been kept secret are to be revealed. There are mysteries that are hidden in the word of God. And friends, the revealing of the sons of God is to provide solutions to the world's problems. And I believe that we are the generation that are going to begin to provide solutions to the problems of the world today. And our approach this year, so therefore the theme for us this year shall be in enlightened to illuminate because we believe that the time is now for the manifestation of the sons of God whom the earnest expectation of creation eagerly awaits. That is Romans chapter 8, verses 18 to 20. When the enlightened to whom it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God have been, that have been hidden or kept secret from the ages, but that they should come to light, shall begin to illuminate as they reveal these mysteries. And the world as a solution to the current world crises, as those who know they are God become strong and do great ex exploits. Our approach this year continues as before, to mobilize Christians, past, present, and future. Somebody was challenging me about Christians not being past leaders. I think we just use that word to refer to people who think that they are no longer active. A Christian leader is a leader till death. God's, God's gifts are without repentance. So once you're a leader, you'll always be a leader. So we imagine an army of Christians in the marketplace gathered in one place, hearing the same sound, speaking the same language, having influence on decisions in every sector of the land. Imagine a time where everywhere you turn, there is a witness for Christ. We believe that it is possible, and we are the generation that are going to make it happen. And Inspire 2014 is going to expedite its fruition. This is not going to be another conference. It's going to be, it's going to be a divine visitation. We believe that the gathering of Christian leaders is going to attract God's presence. And friends, when we leave this place, we shall be like the foxes that Samson used to set ablaze the plantains of the Philistines. Because when you are enlightened, friends, we shall go out of this place and begin to illuminate. I would like to appeal to every believer that is listening to my voice to take up this great challenge and to ready yourself to stand up and be counted as men and women of the generation that God can rely on to bring to pass the words in Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end shall come. There were no better choice of speakers than Africa's greatest Bible teachers. This year we are host, we're going to be having three great Bible teachers. Bishop Dr. John Brown Masinde, Pastor Leban Jumba, and Dr. Stephen Ogan. I have never known any Bible teachers, people who make the Bible so simple and yet very powerful. These three men have a burden for the marketplace. They have recognized a prophecy that Billy Graham gave that the next move of God is going to happen in the marketplace. Friends, the work is outside. In 2012, Bishop Masinde was telling us, it's very ironic, most of us spend about only two hours of our week in church. That's the length of a church service. And we spend the rest of our time in the marketplace. And yet it's very sad that very little about the marketplace is spoken about in church. And that means very, that is why we have created the modular Christianity. Because you only spend two hours in a certain mold. The rest of your life, you have, so you have to have a mold for church and a mold for the marketplace. That's why we're having the dichotomy of Christian and secular. And it's ironic that all the illustrations that Jesus uses in the parables of the end times, the people he was citing were not in church. They were in the marketplace. A man is in the field. A man is grinding. A person is in a sawmill. Everything that happened in the end times was in the marketplace. So we believe that the next move of God is not going to happen in the forward. It's going to be the marketplace. So there's no better choice of speakers than those three great Bible teachers. And to open this year's conference, ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure that I would like to introduce to you an anointed Bible teacher, an author of over 60 books, an evangelist and poet with an attested international prophetic call, the overseer of the high calling outreach, a literate, evangel a literate a literature evangelism ministry based in Port Harcourt, Nigeria, and a motivational speaker. 
Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together and invite our guest speaker, Dr. Steve Sofiri Ogan. Thank you, Paul. Praise the Lord.